Remember the libraries we loaded earlier to do cool things like draw on the map? We've been saving the best library for last, the Places Library. The functionality in the Google Places Library enables your application to search for places, like establishments, geographic locations, or prominent points of interest contained within a defined area, such as the bounds of a map, or around a fixed point. You'll be able to access a crazy amount of data on your favorite McDonald's, nail salons, bars, police stations. That sounds like a typical night out, eh, Emily? Anyway, we'll cover details like that later. Our first usage of this data is much simpler. So far, we've been typing in addresses or locations in order to search for nearby listings in our site. What if we didn't want to have to write out the whole thing? Google's Places library has the Places Autocomplete functionality, which allows the user to get back probable results with each keystroke while entering a location, so they can find what they're looking for faster and more accurately. Essentially, we know what the user is typing before they finish typing it. Let's go back into our code and update both of these text input areas to use autocomplete. The first thing we have to do is include another library, the Places library. This will allow us to use autocomplete and also other features of Places later. So we'll define two new Places autocomplete instances within our initialize function and bind them to our two input boxes. At the simplest level, these will predict what the user is typing with each keystroke and supply the most likely options in a pick list below the input box. We can also add more options to these. In addition to specifying which text input to execute autocomplete on, we can add bounds, which is a lat long area to bias the results towards. This won't restrict the results, but it'll favor items within those bounds. We can also add a types restriction, which will restrict the types of places we get back to, for example, addresses for only precise addresses or establishments for only business. And we can add a component restriction to restrict the results to within a certain country. Let's try biasing the zoom to area autocomplete to within the bounds of the map. Let's test it out. This makes it much easier for the user. And it also makes it much more likely that the geocoder or distance metric service actually finds the location. Let's look at the difference between the zoom to area one and the distance matrix one. Right now, they're both supplying options for New York City. That's because we bias the zoom to area one to within the bounds of the map. But also because even if you don't set any bounds, the API will attempt to detect your location and it'll automatically bias the results to that location. Thus, this one is trying to find me a place in New York because I'm currently in New York. Let's change the bounds of the map and see if it makes a difference. Okay, I've changed the bounds of the map so that we're looking at Detroit. Now, the autocomplete which I bound to the area of the map is actually looking for places in Detroit. Whereas the one where I didn't bind it to anything still knows that I'm in New York City. Pretty neat. If I don't want any bias, I can also specify the bounds of the whole world. Let's take a break before continuing to find out how fast autocomplete really is.